Hey guys, so we're putting the second roof on today. Everything's finally coming together. I'm feeling so excited. But before we get to that, I'm Anna and this is my husband, Spencer. Back in 2013, we dove into DIY renovating our first home, never backing down from a project, no matter the challenge. Then in 2019, we sold our first home and bought our second, setting the stage for even larger renovations. Along the way, we also discovered our passion for gardening with a special love for Japanese maples and conifers. Lately, we've been hard at work building a two-story shed to create space for even bigger dreams ahead. If you like our content, please consider subscribing so that you're notified whenever our latest videos go live. But most importantly, welcome, enjoy the video and join us in our epic journey. Let's go. Hey guys, we're working on the shed again today. That's right, so we're working on the shed. If you're new here, welcome. Uh, this is Building Modern. We've been working on a two-story shed in a Japanese style, and today we're really starting to work on a design element that will really bring in the Japanese feel. Yep, and it is what we're calling the little roof. It's basically just a decorative roof that we're putting around the front and sides of the building that will have cedar shakes. Right, so before we ran out of cedar shakes for the roof before we were going to run out, we decided to save them for this part of the shed. Yep. Um, so it is a whole lot to do, uh, so we just better get going. Yeah, <laughs> All right. First thing we're doing today is getting this little roof set up for the shed. Uh, so what you're looking at right here is this is the wall of the shed and this is where the cedar shakes will be on the roof. So this is around, this board here is two feet long from this point to this point and this is also two feet long and it's very simple. It's 45 degree angles and 90 degree angles so it's pretty darn simple. Uh, I've seen a nice example of one where they use 20 degrees and that was nice but that was for a much larger roof like a four foot overhang and this is just two foot so I think this will be plenty of support right here especially with these boards facing this way rather than like sideways um, and it'll make more sense once we install it yeah it will so I have a template for the whole roof structure that we're doing for the little roof and so what I'm doing is I'm just laying it on top of our other board and marking the lines that way I have a consistent measurement each time instead of using the tape measure which can be inaccurate So now that I've got all of my triangles cut for the support structure for the roof, uh, on to talking about like the actual furring strips. So these are like little cut scrap pieces to show you what I'm talking about. Again, this is like against the building and then this is the angle of the roof here. So basically what you've got is that we're using our cedar fence pickets again. These are the fence pickets that we used for the cedar skirt around the building and the soffit. And so these are perfect size because they are five and a half inches and the Cedar and Shake Bureau says for the furring strips that they want them to be somewhere between one by four and one by sixes. So these are five and a half inches, which is great. Um, so I'm just going to space them evenly on here. Now this spacing is probably closer than it needs to be. Um, this spacing is around one and a quarter inches. Oh, and these pieces would be like up like this. I'm just laying them flat because they're just all going to flop over. So they could be up to three and a quarter inches away from each other. This is closer, but for aesthetic purposes, when you're looking up from below, you'll be able to see these boards and I wanted them to be spaced evenly. Um, after that, these cedar pieces would be laying like this and then we would have our cedar shakes and they would go on top like this. Well, welcome to the garage. It is ever so slightly cooler in here than it is outside, but not by much. It's still pretty warm. Um, 
I am going to make a whole bunch of these, which is the little roof truss, I guess. I don't know if it's considered a truss, but anyway, this is uh, my little roof that I'm making. I'm making about 17 of these, and I need to be uh, making these in a repetitive manner, so I've made a jig. So, well, and this is for against the wall of the building, and then this is the slope of the roof, 45 degree angle. So, uh, I've made myself a little jig here, and what I've done is I've screwed pieces of two by four scraps just onto a piece of OSB, and I made these little wafers, which are spacers, so I can get my boards perfectly aligned, hopefully, in theory, uh, right in the middle of this two by four. So. I've got part A, which goes like this, fits right into here. Then I put down my little wafers that have all been cut to the same depth. Put in part C, which should slide right in here nicely. It does. And then B is a little bit of a struggle. So B gets to wedge in there. And hopefully, I do need wedge. There we go. Sometimes it needs a little persuasion. All right, now that I have everything in my jig here, it holds everything nice and tight. So I'm going to pre-drill all my holes. And then once I have those pre-drilled, I'm going to screw in my pieces nice and dry. Then I'll unscrew everything, apply um, glue, which is Tight Bonds 3, ultimate wood glue. Uh, it's good for outdoors. And um, I think you're good for outdoors. Are you the outdoor one? Exterior, interior, okay. Uh, and then uh, glue that up and then screw it together one final time and then just rinse and repeat 17 times, which I've already done two, so I guess a little less than that. So here we go. Okay, now that these are done, time to paint or stain these. Um, not sure which. I'm going to have to see how much I have of the stain left and how much of the paint I have left. Hopefully stain, because then I don't have to prime. So, we'll see. Well, I went scrounging around and I found stain and paint. Uh, this is the Tricorn Black Stain, and it kind of feels like... I have, I feel like, maybe a third of a gallon? Whereas the Onyx paint, Onyx, you're Onyx, right? Yep, Onyx. It feels like maybe a gallon. I'm not a great judge of this. Uh, I would really prefer to do the stain rather than the paint. That way I don't have to prime as well as paint. Uh, who knows, maybe we'll have a hybrid between the two. I think I've got enough. Uh, but they're very close in color to each other. So maybe I'll end up with like stain on the front, paint on the sides. Who knows, but I'll try with the stain first. Well, I stand by my assessment of I think I've got a third of a gallon here, so we'll see how far this goes. And you know what? The best place to stain is out in your yard with all your mosquito friends. Uh, I think I'm going to be eaten alive out here. I honestly don't know how far this is going to go. This may not even make a dent in these 17 like little roof trusses that I need to paint or stain rather. We'll see. And 
And I know I don't really need to stain this top part here, but it is in grain and if it sees any moisture, it's just nice for it to be sealed. So you won't see it, but it's good for everything to be stained nonetheless. might do is leave these on their sides and then once they're dry flip them over and paint the other side rather than try to paint them upright they might just be too wobbly oh and this is pressure treated wood by the way but it's been sitting out for months and months and months and months so it's pretty darn dry as dry as you can probably get for pressure treated so that's a good thing for it accepting the stain Hey. Hey. Okay, can you tell me what you've been up to? Well, I've been being chased by mosquitoes. Don't paint or stain stuff in the yard. <laughs> That's, I'm thinking they're just, <laughs> <laughs> don't do that, it's a bad idea. Okay. Uh, you so, have off. I know, I have off, like fresh off on and they're you still- You also like... have paint on your face mm -hmm. and on your chin. I was going fast. And on your arm. <laughs> Well, I, I was going fast because I was being like run around with mosquitoes. <laughs> a little battle over there. Yeah, I was like mm -hmm. half mosquitoes, <laughs> half paint. Yeah, I know. I can't tell. Anyway, don't do that. That'd be a bad idea. Okay, here, let's go look at what you've been doing. All right, I'm going to go over there. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here we go. So we're going to go see what this looks like. Uh, is it going to be all mosquitoes? Do you have any mosquito repellent on? Because I still do, I think. Well, these look really bad from this angle. Go from the other way. Oh, uh, okay. These do that's look the bad. back side. Oh, that's the back side. Okay. Whoa, that looks so good. So, well, I think hey, we'll... you gotta stand next to it. We gotta see. Hi. Hi. <laughs> uh, I think we'll have enough stain. I just used just a small amount. This is six of them that I've stained. Well, five and a half. That one's not flipped over. Um, these have been flipped. So we'll have plenty of stain. Well, plenty. We'll have adequate amount of stain. <laughs> they might could use a second coat. Ah, uh, they're getting me. All right, yeah, I gotta I go. <laughs> they're staying. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's go. Mosquitoes. All right, and then let's go look in the garage. What have you been up to there? I heard you were in the garage because it was so hot outside. It was honestly the temperature is probably exactly the same now. Um, but well, it was just rather the sun it's anyway. a nice flat area. I needed a flat area to work. Okay. And I over there proved I was good. I weren't wasn't out there because the mosquitoes. So here's here's some more of these. Oh, look at all of them. Yeah. It looks so good. Thanks. Look at this. <laughs> you making your own sound effects. You do. Those look really good. Look how uniform. Man, it's good you did these and not me. Well, Jig helped. You're, you're more uniform than I am. Well, and also I was like squatting on the ground working on these the entire time. So. Oh, yeah. That wouldn't yeah. work for me. We need a workbench. We got to build a workbench. Yeah, we got to build a workbench. Okay. Well, that's on a project after windows yeah let's finish the shed first before we dive into something else yeah i mean windows well I, I need a workbench in order to make the doors yes you do so then that's justified yeah all right so oh, little, roof, it, well, little roof then windows i would like to have windows windows and then workbench but we're calling the shed done at the windows i think okay and yeah. then the door is just going to be a bonus episode yeah, yeah that's right that's a bonus <laughs> it's finished and then bonus. and then here's a door and right. then oh yeah then the door so what's next so what you just finished all those pieces so what's next uh i have to stain the rest of them but i think i'll wait till tomorrow and set up my sawhorses inside the garage and just stain them in there 
Well, yeah, but I mean saying once we get them all stained, what's next? Oh, we need to just uh, put them on the building. We need to put a little bit of, uh, I keep being paranoid about mosquitoes. I see okay. all this black paint on me. <laughs> um, we need to put a couple of pieces of trim, like the cedar trim that's going to go around the windows and the door, just temporarily tack it up there with just like two nails, just so we can get our spacing correct for uh, those triangles. And then we just need to install those triangles. So we're down here. Anna has finished painting the boards. Uh, she's painted all of the, I guess these are supports. Uh, so we're going to check in and see how she's doing. Well, hey. I figured out a new way of efficiency. Okay. So uh, I only stained five of these yesterday outside in Mosquito City out there. And so today inside, and because our air system is kind of leaky, it's kind of nice and air conditioned in our unconditioned garage here. What I'm doing is I'm painting these or staining these on their side. I'm staining them here. And going under and staining as much as I can under here because they're more stable when they're sitting flat. Okay. And then I tip them up and I finish the last little bits. And then, okay. so that's what I've been doing for all of those. I'm definitely doing a second coat of stain because they're streaky right now. Uh, and I was worried I wouldn't have enough stain, but I definitely have enough stain for a second coat for sure. And these are all of them that we need? Like uh, I have four more sitting on the floor. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. For, well, so I'm just saying that this we is, don't. This is dry, so I need to just start. But you have all the ones made right now. Yes, they're all made, except for the corners. Okay. So the corner pieces, we're right. just going to have to put these in place and then build the corner truss thing in place because I can't math. mathematically figure that out. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of math. It's easier just to put it up. Yeah. Yeah, just put it, figure always, it out, put it the up. I think advice is like, put it in place and then... Cut it flush or figure it out. Yeah, I mean, if it works in place, then that's what we needed. So. Well, I will <laughs> say that for these, I did make these all the same length, and I didn't leave them long. So I guess if you're a professional, you would leave these long, the rafter tails, Yeah. snap a line, and then cut them to length. And I just didn't think about that until just now. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, it's going to be fine. It's going to be have an overhang of the sh shakes anyway. Yeah. And as long as the shakes are overhang, like, Hopefully they're a straight line. Terrible then it's good. And well, and it's rustic anyway, right? It's Japanese rustic. Yeah. And, and you know, we're not doing any drip cap or anything on these. This is not really a supposed to be a watertight roof. It's just decorative. So yeah, though it would help if it puts some water away from the door and window below. So it probably will somewhat, but the over overhang above it from the real roof of the building is farther over than this. This is, even though this is a two foot long board, it equates to something around 17 or 18 inches because of like the slope brings it down. Yeah. So it's not going to be projecting outside of the other roof. So. Okay. All right. Back to staining. Well, and if anybody is interested in what I've been doing, so I've been, uh, what have I been doing? Emailing. I've had emails. I've had correspondence. Sourdough. Uh, I've been baking sourdough and now I'm working on, well, about to go make lunch. Uh, but I'm working on uh, an attic ladder video, which should be coming out soon. Um, so, hey, just wanted to share. I haven't been a lazy bum completely. Uh, so I'm working on stuff, just not this. Uh, pretty soon, though, we'll both be out there and putting, um, putting these actual pieces on the shed, which should happen this afternoon if it's not like 100 degrees. <laughs>okay so now we're outside again uh so now anna's been working on oiling the boards <laughs> you want to show me what it's been like anna it's like 94 degrees out here <laughs> you're so sweaty this is just normal anna your whole face it looks like somebody took like a spray bottle and just sprayed you with it like literally well i did put bug spray on but just on the back of my neck and my arms um did you put on any sunscreen yeah earlier yeah i did okay so i've got sunscreen on <laughs> your whole <laughs> it's hot okay <laughs> um so i just need to oil all these boards i counted i did rough math and i think i need about like 20 of these cedar boards which we had 23 plain down which is good okay uh so i'm just gonna do 20 um that's what my rough math says but not super specific. So I don't want to oil all of them just in case we want to use, in just case we want to paint the ones for the edge trim and stuff. I so see. this is for the soffit. Uh, in case so we're going to need to paint down some more for the trim later though. Yeah. And, and okay. that, if we're going to paint it, we could just not use cedar and use 
pine and it really wouldn't matter. Other yeah, you're right. Other. I mean, it might be slightly different sizes though. We'll have to see. Yeah, we'll have to see. That's a very good point. But, I mean, but these aren't the same size consistently anyway, so it's not. They're, they're close enough. Yeah. So yeah, so that's about 20 boards for this little roof that we're going to put there. Um, yeah. So. Okay. I didn't know you're out here just sweating. Ah, uh, like it's, uh, I just don't handle it very well, honestly. <laughs> you know, you can do this later. It, it's like the same temperature all day. It, okay. It, it's, you know, I, I wonder well. if these are going to dry with the humidity the way it is, honestly. It'll soak in. I don't know if dry. Well, soak in, yeah. Yeah, I'm, thinking... I'm trying to push the oil in and not like, I'm not slathering it on because if it's too thick, it'll just never dry and be sticky. Okay. So I'm just trying to like be very like ginger with it and just kind of push it in. And hopefully that's a nice thin coat. You can do more than one coat, but I think I'm just going to do the one because it's just so hot. <sighs> I'm just going to push through it. <laughs> that just... or I'll run out of oil. We'll see which happens first. Fun just to show this is the shed right now. Hey guys, so we're going to call it here for now. I know it's already been a pretty long video, so thanks so much for sticking around. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. It really does help us. Uh, next week, we hopefully will get to some trim and putting up the second roof. We'll see you there.